Welcome back to Hydrohaven, fellow soil enthusiasts. Today we're diving deep into the fascinating world of compost worm farming, nature's most efficient recycling system, and your garden's secret weapon. If you've been looking for a way to transform your kitchen scraps into garden gold while reducing your environmental footprint, you're in the right place. I've been worm farming for over a decade now, and I'm excited to share everything I've learned about these remarkable creatures that have revolutionized my gardening practice. Let's get our hands dirty and explore how these tiny decomposers can make an enormous difference in your garden's health and productivity. Before we jump into the how-to, let's understand why worm farming deserves a special place in your gardening repertoire. Unlike traditional composting which relies primarily on bacterial decomposition, worm composting, vermicomposting, harnesses the digestive power of earthworms to process organic waste. The result called worm castings or vermicompost is simply the most nutrient-dense, microbially active soil amendment you can add to your garden. Research from Cornell University found that worm castings contain up to 10 times the available nutrients of regular compost, with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, in forms immediately accessible to plants. But perhaps more impressively, these castings are rich in beneficial microorganisms that suppress diseases, repel pests, and improve soil structure. One tablespoon of quality worm castings contains billions of beneficial microbes that inoculate your soil with life. I've personally witnessed struggling plants make remarkable recoveries after a simple application of worm castings. It's like giving your garden a powerful immune system boost. Not all worms are created equal when it comes to composting. While the earthworms in your garden soil do wonderful work, they're not suited for the confined environment of a worm bin. The undisputed champions of vermicomposting are red wigglers, Isenia fetida, and their close relatives, red worms, Lumbricus rubellus. These species thrive in the rich, organic environment of decomposing matter rather than mineral soil. What makes them perfect for worm farming is their voracious appetite. They can consume up to half their body weight daily, rapid reproduction rate, and ability to survive in relatively crowded conditions. European nightcrawlers, also known as Isenia hortensis, are another excellent option, especially if you want larger worms that can also be used for fishing. In my experience, a blend of red wigglers and European nightcrawlers provides the best of both worlds. The wigglers excel at processing surface material while the nightcrawlers work the deeper layers. When purchasing starter worms, seek out reputable suppliers who specialize in vermicomposting rather than bait shops, as you'll want healthy specimens adapted to composting environments. Creating the perfect worm habitat doesn't require fancy equipment, though many commercial options exist. I started with a simple homemade system that served me well for years. Begin with a plastic tote, roughly 10 to 20 gallons, with a secure lid. Drill 1 8 inch ventilation holes around the upper sides and in the lid to ensure proper airflow without allowing pest entry. For drainage, add 10 to 15 quarter inch holes in the bottom and place this bin atop a second, solid container to catch the valuable liquid runoff, known as worm tea. Line the bottom of your worm bin with a piece of landscape fabric or fine mesh to prevent worms from escaping while allowing excess moisture to drain. Now for the bedding. This provides both habitat and initial food for your worms. Shredded newspaper or corrugated cardboard works beautifully as the primary bedding component. Tear it into one-inch strips and soak in water until completely saturated, then wring it out to the moisture level of a wrung-out sponge. This provides the 70 to 80% moisture content worms need to breathe through their skin while preventing drowning. Understanding what and how to feed your worms makes the difference between a thriving worm farm and a smelly disaster. Red wigglers prefer foods in the early stages of decomposition, so letting kitchen scraps age for a day or two before adding them can accelerate processing. Start conservatively with feeding, about a cup of food scraps per pound of worms per week, and adjust based on how quickly they consume it. Bury food beneath the bedding in a different location each time, working in a pattern around the bin. This approach prevents fruit flies and odors while giving worms access to fresh food sources. Even experienced worm farmers encounter occasional issues. Worms climbing the sides or trying to escape usually indicates unfavorable conditions, commonly excess moisture, heat, or acidity. Add dry bedding to absorb moisture and ensure proper ventilation. If your bin temperature exceeds 85 degrees Fahrenheit, move it to a cooler location and leave the lid slightly ajar to release heat. For acidity problems, often from too much fruit, add a sprinkle of garden lime or crushed eggshells to restore proper pH. After three to six months of operation, your bin will contain significant amounts of dark, crumbly worm castings ready for harvest. My favorite collection method is the migration technique. Push all the contents to one side of the bin and add fresh bedding and appetizing food to the empty side. Over the next couple of weeks, most worms will migrate to the new food source, allowing you to harvest the mostly worm-free castings from the original side. 
If this journey into the world of worm farming has inspired you to start your own living soil factory, we'd love to hear about your experiences. Drop a comment below sharing your worm farming successes or questions, and don't forget to subscribe to Hydrohaven for more in-depth guides on working with nature to create abundant, sustainable gardens.